Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, free site. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. In particular, let's talk about Anthony Joshua. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I was reading the comments to my last video on Anthony Joshua, right? Joshua's victory over Alexander Povetkin. For the record, I thought that fight was a toss-up, right? I literally viewed that fight as a 50-50 fight. I know the casinos had that 7-1 to one for Anthony Joshua, right? And higher. Look at your betting sheet, right? Um, Joshua delivered for his fans, no question about it, the hedge held for me personally, right? I had Prevetkin to win for a taste of the big money, and I had a hedge of Joshua by KO. But let me just say this, and um, I know it's an unpopular position, right? First, let's back up a second. Let's talk boxing in general. You know, the scoring in boxing in the last, oh, two years, and I would say the last two years, boxing's been very popular. Forget the pundits who keep trying to convince you that boxing's dying. The opposite is happening, right? Barclay Center, relatively new venue, has been a godsend for boxing in the United States, right? Anthony Joshua and his crowds, right? 80, 90,000 people for a fight have been a godsend for boxing. Understand Twitter, where when a big fight is happening, everyone gets to tweet their score and people get to talk about the fight in real time. That's been a godsend for boxing. Dare I say you too, where you have people like Dante's Boxing Nation and Fight Hype and other other sites here and they'll interview uh the fighters they'll interview not just the fighters but the trainers right by the time a fight happens you feel like you know what's going on in canelo's camp right with anthony joshua you get to hear from joshua you get to hear from prevetkin you get to hear from eddie hearn there's no filter that's been a godsend for boxing and, of course, the latest development. These uh, outfits that are separate and distinct from HBO and Showtime. Now you have ESPN+, Plus. now you have DAZN, right? So now you don't have to pay, you know, $79.99 to watch a big fight. Anthony Joshua was just on DAZN. Here in the United States, at least, the monthly subscription fee is $9.99, right? And, of course, these are reputable outfits. You have people like Ray Leonard, Brian Kenny, Chris Maddox, right? On DAZN, for example, right? You're hearing real boxing announcers, real fighters, and you're watching real fights. That's been great for boxing. The problem is, as we make these fighters bigger celebrities, as the camps become well-defined, right? The Canelo camp is different from the Golovkin camp. And I'm not just talking about the fighters' training camp. I'm talking about the fans. The Deontay Wilder fan club is different from the Anthony Joshua fan club. And, of course, there's a Tyson Fury fan club saying, what's all this hubbub about? Our guy's the lineal champion. Our guy has never been beaten. These other guys, one-handed Wilder, right? Tentative, non-moving Joshua can't possibly compete with our guy who beat a younger version of Vladimir Klitschko than did Joshua, right? Well, as all of this celebrity comes into boxing, we're getting judging. That's simply terrible. It's been awful of late. Folks, in the last two years, it's deteriorated. Let's name just three specific fights here. The Deontay wilder Luis Ortiz fight. Now look, I know Wilder won the fight. 
I'm not saying they should have raised Ortiz's hand, right? I know he wanted to fight. I know Wilder wanted to fight. But I understand Wilder did nothing in the early rounds, right? You can criticize my scorecard, fair enough. But when two guys enter the ring, while I understand that ties go to the champ, Right? While I understand if the fight's a draw, the champ's leaving the ring with his crown. I get it. I'm not, I'm not here bemoaning that. But when two guys enter the ring and one guy outboxes the other guy, to me, the guy who's doing the outboxing should win the round. Now, Wilder did nothing. I mean nothing. The early rounds of that fight, he's barely throwing punches. Luis Ortiz is winning those rounds. Right? Wilder's doing nothing, folks. And somehow, when you look at the scoring after the fight, and I know Wilder won by knockout, and I get that Wilder knocked down Ortiz several times, right? Okay, fair enough. But when you look at the scoring after the knockout, you have to wonder what fight the judges were watching. If you go back and you watch that fight, there was simply no way on God's green earth that Deontay Wilder is winning that fight before he starts knocking down Luis Ortiz. Now, to me, the judges who are so caught up with the celebrity, who are so caught up in who was favored, right, who are so caught up with box office. They might say, gee, you know, Wilder's an unbeaten champion. We're here in an American city. The fans love him. He's coming in the ring with little Kim. Wow, that's a close round, but you know what? Wilder's such a celebrity. Which fans in this arena are gonna be upset if I give that round to Wilder, right? Those judges need to be deep sixed. That's not the sport. You're subtracting from the sport, not adding to the sport. The way fights like that Wilder, Ortiz fight should have been scored is Ortiz should have won every round in which he outperformed Wilder, period. I don't care if Ortiz has no fans, and Ortiz has a lot, but I don't care if Ortiz has no fans. I don't care if Ortiz is unpopular. I don't care if he has a bad attitude. If he shows a disdain for the fans, if he shows a disdain for his corner, if he's the kind of guy who you have to shield your kid's eyes from looking at, right? I don't care if any of that happens. This is a sport that's supposed to be centered around the boxing, right? Understand too, the dynamic in that Ortiz fight should have been. Fans looking at that fight should have known. Ortiz has swept the early rounds. Wilder needs to do something to keep his title. That would have heightened the excitement. But the problem is we're in a culture where you know, where Wilder knows that he could do next to nothing early in a fight, next to nothing. And somehow he's gonna win half of those rounds. Understand, that impacts not just us, because we know it too, right? You say, oh, Wilder's standing at the beginning of the round. Wilder's still on his feet at the end of the round. Substitute other names. Joshua's standing at the beginning of the round. Joshua's still on his feet at the end of the round. And we, the fans, know there's a 50% chance since Wilder and Joshua entered the ring, their fights as champions, that these guys are going to win the round. Right? You know that. Right? You know that. The fighters know that. So now you have fighters who are starting fights slow, and there's no urgency. They know, hey, my, my autograph is worth more than my opponent's, right? I'm the popular fighter here, or at least the more popular fighter here. If I just 
go through the motions and make this round close enough. If I can make this round 60-40, his favor, right? 60 to 40, right? Chances are I'm going to win this round on at least one of the judges' scorecards. So let me say, let's talk about, I'm just briefly going to mention three fights where I thought the scoring was an absolute farce, right? The first, I'll be charitable and not mention the second, the first Golovkin-Canelo fight. I thought the scoring's an absolute farce. Some rounds, Canelo does nothing but run in that fight, right? The Deontay Wilder-Luis Ortiz fight. Wilder wins the fight. Ortiz will tell you Wilder won the fight. The scoring's an absolute farce. This fight, this fight, Joshua against Povetkin. When I made my post-fight video, I had just watched the fight. I didn't have access to the judges' scorecards. I just assumed that everyone knew that Joshua got clipped at the end of the first round. Right, folks, I, for those of you who scored the first round of that fight for Anthony Joshua, please explain the scoring. Tell me where I'm deluded. Right, Prevetkin clearly wins the first round. I mean, guys, if I'm watching a round and the round's relatively even and then the other guy comes in, bam, hits the dude and the dude actually stumbles a little bit like Joshua does. How could I possibly give that round to Joshua? I normally don't give rounds to the guy who's stumbling. Povetkin wins the first round. I would argue Povetkin clearly wins. And I mean clearly wins. Rounds three, four, and five. Clearly. Clearly wins those rounds. So for me, on my scorecard, I had... Povetkin up four rounds to one going into the sixth round, right? I assume many of you did too. It was striking because Povetkin is fighting an unbeaten champion in his backyard, right? Can we agree that the venue was a Joshua venue? Can we agree that the venue was the kind of venue where Joshua takes five minutes to get in the ring and the fans love it? Right? So you can imagine my horror. You can imagine my dismay. My dismay. When I'm hearing after the fact that Joshua was ahead on the scorecards. Folks, I gave Joshua the sixth round myself. Right? I thought the second round was a draw, but understand, even if I gave Joshua the second round, my scorecard would have been 4-2 Povetkin. Right? Let me say this, too. Povetkin, after the fight, gave Joshua his props. He was diplomatic. He wasn't blaming the ref. He wasn't blaming the weather. Right? No, he, he openly admitted he lost the fight. But in his interview, he said, you know, I was winning the fight at the time of the stoppage. Right? He knows he's winning the fight at the time of the stoppage. He has no reason to say that. After getting stopped. Right? He has no reason to lie to us. But the guy says, and he's 100% right, at least on my scorecard. He says, look, I was winning the fight at the time of the stoppage. But yet that's not how the judge saw it. Let me, let me just ask, are, are the judges actually including in their scoring the cheers from the crowd? Is, is that what's going on? So I used to say years ago here online, when Manny Pacquiao ruled the roost, I used to say one of the problems with fighting Manny Pacquiao was that Pacquiao entered the ring with a two-round lead, right? Pacquiao's a guy with a lot of charisma. People actually like Pacquiao, right? By the way, that's different than, let's say, Floyd Mayweather, 
I don't think people like Floyd. I think people respect Floyd. They don't like you. People actually like Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao, to me, is an Ali Ray Leonard type figure. People love him. Dare I say, let's include another name, Canelo. Right? Pacquiao's a Canelo figure. Well, now what's happening in boxing? It's a disturbing trend. Is that a lot of guys are entering the ring with a two-round lead. Right? Deontay Wilder. Some fighters, in my opinion, in certain venues are entering the ring with bigger leads than that. Right? This celebrity boxing craze has got to go. It's got to end right now. People need to start talking out, even in fights. Like the Wilder-Ortiz fight where Wilder knocks down Ortiz multiple times. Or this Joshua Povetkin fight where Joshua knocks down Povetkin multiple times. After the fight, we need to do an autopsy. Okay, we know who the winner was. Right? Povetkin knows. Joshua beat him. Right? We know who the winner was. But we need to do an autopsy on the event. Was this scored correctly? Right? People need to talk with the judges. They need to say, you know, in that first round, it looked to me like the guy who got hit and who stumbled was Joshua. How did you give him the round? What is it in the rest of this three-minute round that led you to believe that he was more effective than Prevetkin? Let me also say, too, we need to start encouraging judges in razor-close rounds to call them a draw. Right? If you feel that it's too hard to tell who won the round. Rather than give it to a Wilder, to a Canelo, to a Joshua, why don't you actually call that round a draw? Call it even. Well, in my eyes, at least four, at least four of the rounds in the recent Joshua Povetkin fight weren't even. I thought Joshua was unprepared, literally unprepared for Prevetkin's episodic jump in, throw punches strategy, right? It's not until, let's say the late fifth round that Joshua decides to change his strategy to actually go more flat-footed, to go shorter. Look at the film. He's standing tall early on. He then starts bending his knees. He then starts planting his feet. He goes shorter. Right? It's only when Joshua changes his strategy, decides he's going to go shorter and focus on hitting Prevetkin as he jumps in, that Joshua is able to turn the fight around. Right? Great move by Joshua. Excellent adjustments. Right? But the point is, before he makes the adjustments, folks, his title hung in the balance. The other guy was doing better than him. We need to tweak boxing culture so we openly acknowledge when an opponent is actually winning rounds. Otherwise, this is just going to be a celebrity worship exercise. Right? So, let me just say, it even affects the dialogue. Right? If Joshua is being awarded rounds, I can't say the word winning, if he's being awarded rounds, where he's getting hit with shots and stumbling and he's clueless in the ring, has no strategy on how to deal with the guys, we'll call it a Mike Tyson style. Right? If he's being awarded some of those rounds, then it's hard to have a discussion where you say, yeah, Joshua needs to tighten these things up. This could have cost Joshua the fight. 
Right? You can't even say that because then someone's going to say, well, Joshua was awarded the round. Look, come on. Enough of that. Understand, too, it highlights a weakness with Joshua. Now, I think Joshua is talented. I was impressed with the adjustments he made in this fight. He exceeded my expectations. He beat a guy who I flatly thought was going to beat Deontay Wilder when that fight was announced. Right? Fight fell apart. Prevet contested positive. Okay. And who I thought would give Joshua problems. Right? It's a big win for Joshua. He exceeded my expectations. I'm impressed. But can we agree that Joshua is methodical? Can we agree that Joshua doesn't move particularly well? That he's the kind of guy who you can surprise with a Prevetkin strategy? Can we, can we openly say that in public? Let's talk about the end of the fight, too. Joshua's a righty. You know it. He throws a good left hook. Needs a little distance on the hook. Right? He throws a good left hook. He throws a spectacular right hand. That's his bread and butter. He can throw it long. In this fight, he showed he can throw it short. Right? The punch that hurts Povetkin is a short, straight right hand, right? Now, all I can say is this. We, we talk about mistakes. We all make mistakes in life, right? All of us. I'm sure there are times where you look back and you say, man, I was going well until this moment. Well, fighters are no different, right? Fighters are just like the rest of us. Now, you're Alexander Povetkin and you're jumping in on Anthony Joshua. Even at 39 years old, you have more coordination than Joshua. You have more foot speed than Joshua, right? Your smaller size is actually helping you against Joshua because you're faster than Joshua. You're able to get in and out, right? Povetkin makes a mistake. If the only punch Joshua can throw short is a straight right hand, right? If that's the only punch he can throw short, why are you jumping in? And it's a mistake he makes. Why are you jumping in on Joshua's right side? Right? Understand, he starts strong. We're going to get away from the imaginary scoring of the actual judges. And let's talk about the way the fight's really going down. Povetkin starts strong. Joshua then goes into counter mode. Right? Joshua stops seeking him out. Joshua goes a little flat-footed. Right? Joshua's waiting for him to jump in. In other words, Joshua is channeling... Juan Manuel Marquez against Manny Pacquiao. Right? Now, just like Pacquiao makes a mistake, jumps in and gets hit with the Marquez straight right hand in the fight where Pacquiao gets knocked out. Just like Pacquiao makes a mistake, because if he comes in over here, right? If he comes in away from the right hand, then Marquez wouldn't be able to have that counter fully cocked and ready. Right? Prevetkin makes the same mistake Pacquiao makes. In a fight, in my opinion, he's winning. He comes in on Joshua's right side. One of the keys to Joshua is that he is an accomplished counterpuncher. Dare I say it, the big guy with the big punch, actually prefers to counter you rather than lead. So you'll notice in that Joshua Povetkin fight, Povetkin often keeps Joshua from throwing punches by fainting, right? Lead punchers don't care about your feints. You're fainting, they're trying to hit you first anyway. So this guy's bluffing coming in. Hey, that's all good. I'm, I'm throwing my shots. Think Rocky Marciano. 
right? By contrast, when Pravetkin is fainting, Joshua is not throwing. Right? He wants the punch to come so he can counter the punch. Brevetkin's big mistake here wasn't the fight style. It's that he comes in at the wrong angle and Joshua then reveals that he can throw a very short straight right hand. That he doesn't have to get his full body into the shot for the shot to knock you out. After he hits Prevetkin with the short right hand, Prevetkin's out of it. Prevetkin gets hit with other shots. But Prevetkin never recovers from that short right hand. What Prevetkin could have done is lived off of jumping on Joshua's left side. What he should have also done is when he comes in, Right, and he gets close to Joshua because what he was doing was jumping in and then being close to Joshua, throwing a bunch of punches. What he should have done is jumped in, looking at that right hand, keeping his head low. You know fighters who keep their head low, Jorge Arce, right? His head's down here, but he's throwing shots like this, right? Prevetkin should have jumped in with a hand up to guard against the possibility of a straight right hand coming back at him. Let me also say too that you didn't see it in this fight, but Joshua throws one of boxing's premier uppercuts, right? Joshua can throw that punch as a lead or a counter. If you're gonna jump inside too, you might wanna have a little bit of an arm bar. So you'd wanna come in leaning with a hand up like this. So if he throws the uppercut, he's hitting an elbow. If he throws the right hand, he's hitting your glove. Now I'm someone who believes that no one's unbeatable. That if you have the right strategy and the right style, you can beat anyone. Now, I do view Deontay Wilder as one-handed. I do view Joshua as a guy who can throw the shorter punches, who has the better balance, who, if he gets inside on Wilder, might be able to dominate, right? But what I want people to consider is a Joshua Tyson Fury matchup. I know the Joshua crowd, they're trying their damnedest to avoid Tyson Fury next April, right? They've even announced that even if Wilder loses the fight, think about how ridiculous this is. And Joshua, a big criticism of Joshua is he needs to, quite frankly, embrace the idea of fighting the other champion. His fight against Prevetkin shouldn't have happened. It should have been a fight against Wilder. Understand, I know people say, oh, we would have lost the belt because Prevetkin's the mandatory. If he beat Wilder, he would have gained Wilder's belt. And with us, the public, he would have fought the most credible opponent out there. Well, now the Joshua crowd, and no doubt this has a lot to do with the launch of the zone, right? No doubt the zone launches, they wanted to give fighters, excuse me, give viewers a taste of heavyweight championship boxing and they uh, wanted to give viewers a 30-day money-back guarantee period. And uh, it's just easier for them to do that with Prevetkin as opposed to have everyone watch the Wilder fight and then, um, you know, say, hey, I'm not going to use the service, get their money back and stuff like that, right? Having a future Wilder fight is going to lead a lot of people to keep the the zone service. Okay, I understand their, their business reasons, right? And I get the idea that it's professional prize fighting, that it is a business, right? But okay, you didn't fight Wilder in the fall, right? Do us a favor and don't insult our intelligence further by saying that even if the lineal champion beats Wilder, that you're not gonna fight the lineal champion next. Understand, as I see it, 
you're either the heavyweight champion or you're someone else. Right? If Anthony Joshua is going to take the mindset, and he's British, if he's going to take the mindset that he's not going to fight the heavyweight lineal champion who's also British, right, in the UK, in his next fight, then I have no interest. Seriously, I, I have no interest in following Joshua's career until he starts recognizing boxing history and treating fans with more respect. I mean, I'm not going to have any heavyweight champion throw dirt on me, right? If I'm a fan and the lineal champion beats the WBC champion, I'm not going to watch a fight where some other champion then decides that he's not going to fight the lineal champion. He's going to fight the guy the lineal champion just beat. Right? The British press, if I had one of my red flags here, I would throw it. The British press needs to say to Joshua, excuse me, what do you mean? What do you mean? When you say you're not going to fight Tyson Fury, even if Tyson Fury beats Deontay Wilder. Right? If the guy doesn't have a clear, coherent answer, if all the guy says is Tyson Fury blocked me on Twitter, then I'm just going to, you know, close my folder, turn off my mic, leave the press conference. I, I got no interest in heavyweight champs who want me to believe they're heavyweight champs when they aren't going to fight lineal champions. When they don't even have a good reason for not fighting the lineal champion. Right? So, to sum up, let me just say this. And you can call it sour grapes. Call it whatever you want. The scoring in boxing is worse than it's been in a long time. It really... I don't even understand, by the way. Uh, let me mention the rematch. I don't even understand the scoring in the Golovkin-Canelo fight. I think it diminishes the sport when people are explaining the fight to you and they have to say to you, you know, that fight happened in Vegas. And then you say, oh, okay, I know. Okay, Vegas, so Canelo entered the ring with, what, a two, three-round margin? Right? The scoring in boxing needs help. Even in fights where there's a KO, where there's a clear winner, Joshua Povetkin, we need to do autopsies on the scoring. That's the first thing. Right? The second thing is, this Povetkin fight was huge. Joshua wins the fight. I congratulate him. Joshua is a force. I believe the kind of mobile guy who would give Joshua problems, Joshua has actually fought. Right? Parker, Povetkin. I think Joshua cleans out Dylan White and some others who stay in the pocket. So Joshua's awfully close awfully close to just being left with pocket fighters, right? Or guys who are predictable. Deontay Wilder's a little outside the pocket, but he's predictable. That Joshua might be able to feast on, right? But we need to focus on Joshua's strengths and weaknesses, the fact that he lost most of the early rounds against Povetkin, because I got to tell you, in boxing, there's going to be some young guy who comes up who's mobile, who's episodic, who knows to come in on Joshua's left side, who's going to know how to defend himself against Joshua's straight right hand, who's going to figure out that Joshua isn't Vitaly Klitschko. He's not up on his toes with the lean where it's hard to find him. Right? When the rubber hits the road and the fight gets difficult, Joshua's actually going to go flat-footed in counter-punching mode, and he's going to lean forward. Right? And we need to be prepared for that fighter. For the next Mike Tyson. Let me also say this, too. I normally agree with Teddy Atlas on boxing. Teddy is way off the mark. 
in recent interviews and saying that Mike Tyson wasn't a great fighter. Folks, I believe Mike Tyson today would clean out the heavyweight division. I just saw Alexander Povetkin win the first half of his fight against Anthony Joshua, and Povetkin's 39 years old. Right? A big, punching, quick-as-a-cat guy who can jump inside and who throws short punches, who has more punching power than Alexander Povetkin and who's two-handed. You really think that that guy wouldn't have a chance against a lot of these fighters? Come on. You know, quite frankly, Alexander Usyk, the cruiserweight who's about to fight Tony Bellew, right? He's going to have a lot of success at heavyweight as long as he doesn't get caught because we're in a flat-footed big fighter era and I'm telling you things run in cycles and someone who's quick on their feet, who knows how to box, who has hand speed, who's a strategist, that guy's going to have success, right? So. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. If you had a scorecard that had Wilder ahead of Ortiz before Wilder knocks Ortiz down the first time. If you have a scorecard that matched the scorecard of the judges in this Joshua Povetkin fight. Right? If you feel the first Golovkin Canelo fight was properly scored then I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video, right? I think boxing is getting more popular. I think the technology, Twitter, uh, the Zone, ESPN Plus is allowing the sport to get more popular. The fact that the internet allows you to actually look up a fighter's old fight. So I could sit here and I could say, gee, Manny Pacquiao against El Terrible, Eric Morales. That was a great fight. Let me go back and see that fight, you know? It allows the fans to get closer to the fighters' careers, right? I can look up several Deontay Wilder fights right now. I can go back to the amateurs and look at Golovkin, look at Wilder and guys like that. I can pull up the old Olympics thanks to the internet, and I can look up Anthony Joshua. But let's be careful here. While I think that's all good for the sport, let's not have this sport descend into celebrity worship. Right? I don't, I don't want these fights to be such where you say, hey, Canelo's standing at the end of the round, and you know what? This fight's in Vegas. I'm going to give that round to Canelo. That's not the way the sport is supposed to work. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.